there's an interesting um, Tana de Baal Yo, uh, which is from Elio Anavi, Elijah the prophet, uh, a statement that he said that Hashem, that God is called an usher, is called a rich, it's called wealthy. So obviously, when we call God wealthy, we're not referring to you know how much he has in his bank account or uh, how many stocks he has or what his net worth is. I don't think that he's ever been written up in Forbes. I don't think there's ever been a God. So even though on the dollar bill it does say in God we trust, that's not what it's referring to. But what does it mean that God is wealthy? So I once heard, I saw the Mepharshim bring down a fascinating thought. There's a Mishnah in Avos, in, in uh, Ethics of Our Fathers, that says, Ezehu ashir hasameach bechalka. Who is rich, who is wealthy, truly wealthy? He was happy with his portion. So we're not going to focus on the simple meaning, which is to be happy with what you have, but a person or someone who is happy with his portion, his chelek, hasameach bechalkai, he is called an usher, he is called wealthy. So the Mepharshim explain that Hashem is also happy with his portion. Who is God's portion? Klal Yisrael. The Jewish people are called God's portion. Because we have a chelek eloka mimal. Chelek eloka mimal means that each person has a divine property inside him, a portion of God on high. Meaning there's something divine, there's a part of us that is in essence a part of God. It is portioned off, it is like given off to us. To use the most mundane analogy, it's like if you have a piece of Play-Doh, you have one big one, and then you take from there and you put it in one, and you put it in another, and you put it in another. That's, in essence, where we're coming from. But the Play-Doh analogy is not a good one, because when you take a piece of Play-Doh away from the big clump of Play-Doh, they're no longer connected. But when you take away the piece of God and put it somewhere else, it's still connected. In essence, it's still there, they're still connected, just there's some barrier of physicality, of finite existence in the way, but the, the peace of God is still there. What is that peace of God called? That's called the chelek eloka, that's called the portion of Hashem, but in essence that's called the neshama, that's called the soul. The soul is a piece of God. The soul comes from Hashem Himself. A small piece of Hashem exists in every single one of us. What and where is that soul? So, usually when we think about it, we say the soul is here. Well, there's truth to that. But the Svarim tell us that mostly the soul is up here. The soul is in the Reish, which is the head. But it's also from the word Rishon, which is always the first and the top. That is why the head is on top of the body, facing upwards, as opposed to animals whose heads are usually facing down towards earth because their source is completely physical and finite. Our source, which is the head, meaning the neshama, is facing upwards because it is closer to Hashem. The soul, that portion of Hashem that exists in each and every one of us, is in essence the intellect, knowledge, the mind. The mind, the Rambam and the Chovas Havavas explain, the mind is the conduit in which God speaks to mankind. God speaks to us through our mind, which is really through our soul, through our neshama. The more clarity that a person has in his thinking, the more unlimited his mind is, or the more unpainted or unadulterated it is, the more he can understand and connect to his godly form, which is his neshama. But the more things that are in the way, the more things that limit him and his perception and his vision, the more personal desires and wills and wants that he has, they get in the way of his neshama. So the message that the neshama will send to the rest of the body, in essence, the message may be silenced, or may be staticky. You won't be able to hear it. The channels are not on the right, the, the knob is not on the right channel. So when a person wants to connect to Hashem, 
through his neshama, through his soul, which always wants to return to its original source, which is God himself, that is the portion of God. In order to do that, a person has to have a pure, altruistic mindset in order to allow God to speak to him through his mind. This is the Nevoah prophecy, and more than that, this is the Torah. The Torah allows both things to happen. Allows a person to connect to the divine will, but it also allows a person to purify his mind, to remove the limitations that will give him the ability to access the divine, the neshama that speaks to him from God. This is the essence of the soul, and this is what the neshama does when it learns. This is what the Zohar says, Yisrael the Iraisa, the Kudush Barichu, Chadhu, Klal Yisrael, our souls, Iraisa the Torah, the Kudush Barichu, and Hashem, they're all one. All of those together are really one essence, the divine. In order for us to connect to it more, in order for us to unite ourselves with it more, we need to remove the barriers, we need to remove the limitations of physicality, of our finite existence, of shallowness, of temptations and desires. And the only way that we will really connect, as the Pasuk says, Ner Elohim Nishmas Adam, the, the flame or the candle of Hashem is the soul of a person. Like a candle, like a flame is always going upwards, so too our soul always wants to go upwards, always wants to return to Hashem. But we have this physical thing here called body. We have this physical part of us that focuses on our own wants and desires instead of solely focusing on the will of Hashem, that is the impediment to the neshama and to the voice of Hashem speaking through the neshama. But were it possible for a person to have absolutely clear, pure, pristine mind, the, the word of God would come to him and through him very clearly. This is something that is spoken about in many of the Svarim. The Torah gives a person the ability, number one, to connect to this oneness of Hashem and the soul of people, but also it gives a person clarity and pureness in his mind that he can now have the mind as the conduit that Hashem speaks to him through. When a person learns Torah, not just once, not just because, okay, I got to go, not just out of intellectual thirst, but when a person learns Torah in order to connect, in order to re remove all barriers and connect with oneness, complete oneness to Hashem and His neshama and His soul, that is something that will give him, in essence, the ability to hear loud and clear the voice of Hashem that will speak to him and through him, through his soul. This is something that we find throughout the generations called Das Taira. Das Taira is, literally means the intellect or the knowledge of Taira. That there were people in this world and are living in this world, the great leaders of the generation, that through their continuous, unlimited Dveikos and Taira, through their continuous learning that never stops, both day and night, always focusing on allowing their soul to taste the godliness and to taste the divine by being Isaac and Tyre, by learning and by, by pursuing God's will through his Tyra, not only does it give them clarity of mind, but it also allows the voice of Hashem to speak to them and through them. This is something that the Torah discusses often. This is called Das Tyra. When we, there, there is a, a, uh, a saying, when you pray, you talk to God. When you learn, God talks to you. What that means is that the Torah is, in essence, allowing a person's neshama, his soul, which is the divine peace of Hashem inside him, to be a conduit for Hashem to speak to him. The Svarim even tell us, this is something that's brought down from the Gra, that if, and obviously this has to be, uh, you know, this is not one of those things you want to try at home. But if a person is stuck in a desert, he doesn't know where to go, right or left, life and death, he has no one to ask, he doesn't know what to do. If he should learn, he should learn Tyra for a few hours until it gets a part of him and then think about the issue and whatever it is, whatever decision comes to his mind, he should follow it. 
If you come to a fork in the road, pick it up and eat with it. But what that's telling us is, is that the Torah gives a person the ability for God to speak to him and through his soul. This is the essence of the Torah. Torah, the Iraisa, the Kudosh Abarichu, Chadu. Klal Yisrael, the Neshama that we are. The portion of Hashem that exists in each and every one of us, and the Torah and Hashem are all one. We're going to end with one final thought. The Gemara says that if a person sees a wise man, he makes a bracha. Obviously, I don't want you to do this on video. You have to see me personally. But if you see a wise man, you make a blessing. That's when you see a stam wise man. When you see a scholar of Torah, you make a different bracha. When you see a regular wise person, you make shenasan mechach masai, that Hashem gave wisdom to humans, to mankind. But when you see a person, a scholar of Torah, you say, Shecholak mechach masai, he portioned out his wisdom to basar vadam, to, to yirei shemayim, to a fear of uh, those who fear heaven. The difference between nasan, between giving and portioning out, is that the intellect that there is in a wise person, a regular smart man, is given to him. It's a gift. But the wisdom that exists in a Torah scholar is not a gift that was given to him. It's a part of God that was portioned out to him. It's a part of God still while it exists in that person. He never loses it. So what that means is that his neshama is so great, his soul is so powerful and connected to Hashem that God in essence is speaking to him and giving him his wisdom, teaching him wisdom through his neshama. When we bless every day and we say, Thank you, Hashem, Hamalame Torah Ta'ama Yisrael, who teaches Torah to Kal Yisrael, that is true because in every second God teaches us. He speaks to us through our intellect, and our intellect is our neshama. So when we are aware of the power of the divine soul that we have, and the precious, cherished position that it has as both being a portion of God and a conduit for God to speak to us, not only will we respect it, not only will we cherish it more, but hopefully we will listen to its call instead of the call of our bodies and our temptations and hear the voice of God that speaks to me and you.